Welcome to Victory Live, streaming from the campus of Victory Baptist Church in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. We're glad you've joined this week's worship broadcast live on our Facebook page and as well as our website. At the conclusion of the message today, we will give you more information on how to better connect with Victory Baptist. As you prepare for this week's message, grab your Bible and follow along as we join this week's Victory Live broadcast. Collecting for the Golden Offering, which is the Tennessee Baptist Mission Board. And it is an opportunity for us to gather money in order to see the salvation go out and for us to do great works across the t- the state of Tennessee. And so we are really excited. Um, So please make sure that you come and you give generously so that we can see more people come to know Jesus. And we are really excited about it. So please, it's not too late to give to that. Lastly, this Wednesday, please make sure that if you have not come to our first interest meeting, there will be a second interest meeting for small groups. So whether you're a teenager or a senior adult, small groups is for you. It's another opportunity, one of the many ways for us to connect with each other. And so that's going to be this Wednesday, October 2nd, in the youth room, and that's going to be at 530. If you have no idea what a small group is, please come. We'd love to tell you, you know, we have multiple ways for us to connect and to learn about God. Um, This is not a replacement of anything. This is just another addition to say, hey, this is a way for us to connect outside of here and for us to grow in our relationship with the Lord. So please make sure that you come 530 on Wednesday in the youth room, um, October 2nd. Well, with that being said, why don't we go ahead and get our worship service started? Let me pray for us as we begin, and then we'll start our service. Judge on me as we pray. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the fact that we can live out scripture and we can live it out. It says that we are one church, one body with one mission who serves one God. And today we get to lift up the name of Jesus and declare it and to sing his praises. And Father, get to be a part of celebrating baptism And to, Father, and just reflecting on what Jesus has done for us through the Lord's Supper. Father, what an exciting day to be together, gathered as one. We're so, so thankful that you have given us one spirit that we all have in common, that we can share. And that, Father, that we can share the love of Christ with others. Lord, I pray today that you would be magnified that your name would be lifted up high, and that when we leave here, people would be excited and super pumped to share about what Jesus has done in their life. Father, help us to be people that live on mission, to be people who lift up Jesus' name and not ours. Lord, we love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. you guys will sing with me the words will be on the screen come thou found come thou found of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious song sung by flaming tongues above praise the mountain fixed upon it mount of thy redeeming love here i raise my ebenezer hither by thy help i come and i know by thy good Safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor. 
daily I am constrained to be. Let thy grace go like a feather, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take it, seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, Lord, take it, seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. As we continue to stand to worship the Lord, Jesus paid it all. I think we all know that one. He did pay it all for us, didn't he? Amen. Now I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thy all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white. I'm just back and forth, right? So moving back and forth. Quick outfit change. But man, today I'm excited. I am super pumped that we get to just show what Jesus has done and how he has transformed somebody's life, a special person's life. Today we get to baptize one of our teenagers, Caitlin Barth. And Caitlin, if you'll come on down here. This is Caitlin Barth, and she came a little over a month ago, um, one Sunday when I was preaching, and some of you guys got to witness that. She came down the aisle, and she said, Mike, I need Jesus, and she professed Jesus to be her Lord and Savior that Sunday, and man, yeah, y'all can clap. Baptism's a good thing. Like, it's okay to clap. This is a time that I tell people all the time that baptism is a time for us to celebrate and for Caitlin to show that she is identifying with Jesus. 
It's a time for her. There's nothing magical about this water. There's nothing special. The water doesn't save her. She's already placed her trust in Jesus. This is just a symbol of her saying, listen, I am identifying with Jesus. I am making an advertisement to you guys. And so we're going to celebrate that today. It's okay to clap. It's okay to cheer for her. Because guess what? There are angels in heaven that have rejoiced the fact that Caitlin is no longer lost, but she is found and she has salvation. And so that's exciting. And so we're going to do that today. If you are a part of Caitlin's family, whether it be grandparents, parents, you know, I know Jennifer's back here, and Brian, Robert, if you guys will stand, grandparents, if you guys will stand, um, we just want to honor you guys. Thank you, guys. And so what we're going to do, though, is we're going to baptize her, and then after that, we're going to spend some time just praying over her, all right? Caitlin, are you ready? All right, let me slide past you over here. You're going to turn and face this way so your mama could see you. All right. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to baptize her, like I said, and it's going to be an exciting time. And so please feel free after we pray, just let her know that you guys support her. Well, Caitlin, it was an honor to see you come down that aisle. And we are so excited that you have placed your trust in Jesus. I just want to ask you, is it true that you have trusted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? Well, it is my privilege to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There you go. (laughs) You were baptized with Jesus, and you were raised to walk in the newness of life. Now, church, I want to charge you. You guys have a responsibility now. You guys have a responsibility to help encourage and to help disciple this teenager. She's not going to be another statistic, okay? It's where we just see her grow up in the church and then just leave the church. You guys have a responsibility to encourage her and to say, hey, this is how you dig in the scripture. This is how you pray. This is how you serve. And so that is my encouragement to you guys, that you guys would walk alongside her and Jennifer and Brian as they help raise her in her new relationship with Jesus. Can you guys do that? All right, well, let's pray for her. Father, I thank you for Caitlin. I thank you for this time. Father, where she has made a profession of faith and then she has made a declaration to everyone here to say that she has followed Jesus. Father, I pray for protection over her, that you would guide her and that you would protect her mind and her heart and her soul. And that, God, you would help to develop her and to be in a mighty, strong, wise, godly woman who loves Jesus and who is excited to share about him. God, I pray that you would help us as a church to help disciple her and walk alongside her. Father, let her know that she is loved and people are here to help support her. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give this uh, young lady a future and, and with you. Father, we ask that you please bless these tithes and offerings that we are taking today, that they may be used to spread your word and to bring more people into salvation. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
guys will stand with us as we sing this song out and sing my hope is built on nothing less my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest friend but holy trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend but holy trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord. seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the grave my anchor holds within the grave the Savior's love through the storm He is Lord the Lord of all He is Lord He's the Lord Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, the Lord of all. Oh, Christ alone. in his righteousness alone and faultless stand before the throne Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the Savior's love Weak and strong in 
children church. All the children, come up here. All right, over here. <laughs> All over here, please. Why don't you step right here for me? Step right here. Thank you. All right, y'all can sit down. Y'all can sit down. Awesome. How y'all doing today? Good, awesome. You know what? You know what the coming month is going to be about. What? What the name of this month is coming up? October, October exactly. October reminds me of Friday night football, cold weather, hot cocoa, and pumping. Yeah. So. <laughs> I wanted to make you guys something about pumping. There's so many different types of pumping with different colors, orange, white. Some got bump in them. Some are big. Some are small. Some got a long stem. It's all different types. But guess what? We are just like pumping as well. God created us to be different. Each one of us is different. We stay in Jeremiah 1 5, which said, I choose you before I form me in the womb. I set you apart before you were born. God had a plan for each one of us. God knew how many hair you had in your hair. He knew what kind of personality you're going to have. He had a plan for each one of us, just like the pumping. But speaking of pumping, raise your hand if you ever carve a pumping with your mom and dad. Awesome. Okay. So when you guys open up the pumping, you got to pull out this slimy yellow stuff, which is called gunk. G-U-N-K. It is nasty. It stinky. And you have to clean it all out, and then you put a candle in it and you cut the hole to make a smiley face. You know what's interesting? Like I mentioned, we're just like pumping. We're all different. We also were born with sin. The good news is that God gave his only son to die for his sin. So if we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and ask for forgiveness, God wipe our sin completely away. Because we accept Jesus Christ as a Savior. And once you do that, once you accept Jesus Christ as a Savior, we're not called to reflect our own light. We are called to reflect Jesus' light. Hey, Penny, why don't you come up here? All right. <laughs> so, so, think about this. The pump until we got whole, we got smiley face. So, when we accept Jesus Christ as a Savior, we are called to show the, show the light of Jesus Christ. That's pretty cool. So it's never too late, it's never too early to learn about who Jesus is and what Jesus can do for you. So let's pray. So take your left hand and your right hand, put it together, and close your eyes and let's pray. God, thank you for a wonderful opportunity for us to serve you. You are great, you are mighty. Please continue to be with the wonderful children and all the students and the people here at Victory Bible Church. And everything you do, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, children, won't you come with me and follow me? We'll go out to the door.
Therein lies the future of Victory Baptist Church. Amen. Right there. was blind but now I clearly see I shall forever lift mine eyes to Calvary to view the cross where my Jesus Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond my fault and he saw my How marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond my fault. He looked beyond your fault.
I should have let someone else follow that. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> I want to say uh, just a personal word of uh, gratitude to my brother and uh, fellow servant, uh, Jim Murray. Uh, it's been um, a wonderful journey together. And the Lord has blessed us for it. So. When Jim and I first sat down and talked about the possibility of his coming to uh, work with us here, I had to ask him one question. I said, Jim, are you going to be okay knowing that the pastor is someone that was listening to your music when he was a teenager? <laughs> and uh, Jim was okay with that. He has been okay with that, and we've grown together. And so I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that we've grown together. Today is a day that we've looked forward to as we gather together and to see the family of Victory Baptist as one really uh, speaks to my heart. And I know there are some challenges that we have that lead us to recognize that uh, we, we have two services and, and uh, the wonderful thing is that I believe today is the beginning of something great that will allow us at least four times a year to come together and say, we are one in Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Find with me this morning, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and uh, we will be preparing for the Lord's Supper, so uh, remind you of that. And this is a passage where Paul is giving instruction to the church Obviously, he was writing to the Corinthian church, but God has seen fit to allow this Holy Spirit-inspired, divinely inspired Word of God to reach down through the centuries and to speak into our lives and to give instruction to us as we think about what we are about to do together as a family of God and as the people of God. And so here Paul this morning as he speaks into our lives a message that I believe that he believed came directly from the heart of God. So hear these words beginning at verse 27, 1 Corinthians 11, beginning at verse 27. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an un unworthy manner will be guilty of sin against the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine themselves. In this way, let them eat the bread and drink from the cup. For whoever eats and drinks without recognizing the body eats and drinks judgment on themselves. This is why many are sick and ill among you, and many have fallen asleep. If we were properly judging ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned with the word, with the world. It is God's blessing in the midst of the discipline. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, welcome one another. If anyone is hungry, he should eat at home so that when you gather together, you will not come under judgment. And I will give instruction about other matters whenever I come. May the Lord add his richest blessing to the reading of his word. Heavenly Father, we have gathered here today not to hear from a man, but to hear from you. Lord, we have gathered here today as a family that is the family of God, that resides and gathers and worships on this hill that you provided 
so long ago. And now, Father, may we embrace through fellowship at the Lord's table the true meaning of God's family. We are one with you. May we always seek to be one with each other as we gather here in your name. Amen. The look. Have you ever had the look? You know, maybe from mom. Yeah, we've had that, right? Maybe from a spouse. Some of you may be getting that right now. Maybe from the preacher. It's the look. We all know it. We've all seen it. We've all experienced it. The look catches our attention, doesn't it? The look causes us to consider, what have I done? Or maybe, what is it I forgot to do? The look lets us know that in that moment, someone is focusing on us. There is nothing else going on in the room that can break their stare. Their eyes, their mind, and even their fury are all glued to us like gorilla glue. Right? And in that moment, oh, how we wish we'd all listen when Mama said, and Mama told me not to come. Because that ain't the way to have fun. Right? That look says to us, check yourself. Paul has set his stare on each of us as the people of God. He set his stare on the church at Corinth. And now through the inspiration and through the keeping of the Lord, that stare is set on us. And Paul was saying to the church at Corinth, he's saying to us, check yourself. And where better to check ourselves than at the Lord's table? It's here that we are reminded and we are to remember all that God has done for us. It's here that we begin to recognize the fact that we are a part of something that is far greater than each of us as an individual, and it is far greater than all of us as a corporate body of faith. Because here we come to understand and to celebrate and to stand on the foundation that allows us to know beyond knowing that we are sealed to the promise of Almighty God that all who call on the name of Jesus shall be saved, And as we are saved, we are sealed to a promise that no one or nothing can break. And therefore, Paul says, take a look at yourself. Examine yourself. Check yourself. How important is that for us? I would ask each of us this morning, when is the last time we took a long look at ourselves? That serious stare where we ask ourselves the question, how does the Heavenly Father see me this morning? How does He see me today? If God had something to show me about how I'm relating to Him, I wonder what it would be this morning. What is it that He would want to say to me as I prepare my heart, my life, to come to the Lord's table and to honor Him and to honor the sacrifice that Jesus made on my behalf and for you on your behalf? Have we ever checked ourselves asking questions like these? Lord, what is there in me that you are not happy with? When's the last time we've paused just long enough? We've shut the rest of the world out for just a moment. We've gone into that closet, that private place where we're just one-on-one with God. And we allow the Lord Jesus to intercede for us. And we ask the Lord in that moment, Lord, what is there in me today that you're not happy with? Or maybe yet another question, Lord, what is there in me that does not reflect Jesus to others? What is there that is dulling the light, that's shading the light of Jesus in my life? Lord, what is there in me that displays a selfish, self-centered attitude 
or a haughty spirit. You see, it's not until we look closely and check ourselves that we then are able to begin to say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. I I confess today, it's me. It's me, Lord. It's not my wife. It's not my children. It's not my boss. It's no one else's fault. I chose to sin. I chose to do that which does not please you. There are no excuses, Lord. You have placed your Holy Spirit in me. You have imputed your righteousness to me. You have placed it on me. It is overshadowing me until I fail to allow your presence, your promise to shine through me. Lord, today I face myself, I face you guilty. But Lord, it's been too long since I've checked myself because I spend all my time comparing myself to those around me rather than to looking to you. And that's what the Lord's table does for us. The Lord's table should bring every believer to a place where we recognize this one fact. The center of every moment, every aspect of this celebration is the Lord Jesus. Therefore, as I take a careful look at myself, as I check myself, and as I look at me seriously and honestly, It's then that I must look up and see the Lord. And as I cry out to him and plead for his forgiveness, I am reminded of the promise of God's grace and how God administers his grace to me and to you. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to restore us from all righteousness. Most translations have that if, if, No, I think a better way of us looking at it today and this morning is when we confess. When we confess. And we see the grace. Ray Pritchard says that God's grace always comes down from his throne. I'm thinking of Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6. The scripture says that he's gone to the temple and he's there and he's worshiping and he's praying. The king has died. He doesn't know what's next. He doesn't know what's coming. He's uncertain about his future and he's praying. And the scripture says that God gives him a great vision and he sees God high and lifted up. And as he sees him, then he sees himself as he really is. And the scripture says and records for us his words, Woe is me for I am undone in the presence of God. But the Lord's table reminds us that as we look up, we see that God is not looking at us with haughty eyes, condemning eyes. Can I say to all of us this morning that the way that we look at one another with that look, boy, you're in for it now. You you know what I'm saying? You just wait till we get home. I, I, I never heard that. My folks didn't wait. (laughs) I think they were old enough they thought they might forget. (laughs) We need to remind ourselves this morning that when God looks down at us, He's not looking down at us with eyes that are filled with anger. He's not looking down at us. When when Isaiah understood his position, the scripture says, then the Lord acted on his behalf and sent one of the seraphim to come and to touch his lips with a coal from the altar. There that was a sweet aroma in the nostrils of Almighty God. And at that moment, he understood that God was not looking at him with eyes of judgment, but he was looking at him with eyes of grace and compassion. And his life was transformed forevermore. And instead of being focused on what that was uncertain to him, he now knew that there was a certainty that God was watching over him. And he said, Lord... Here am I, send me, wherever you will have me go, I will go. 
You see, that's what grace does for us. Grace leads us to a place where we begin to recognize that, hey, folks, this life, it's not all about me. It's really all about him. And here's what Jesus is asking. Here's what Jesus is really asking, I believe, of each of us. He's saying to us, listen, folks, it is all about me. I just want to know who will go along with me. Who, who will follow along with me? And isn't it interesting that when Jesus spoke about himself, he always said, I can do nothing except that which the Father grants for me to do. I am not here for my honor and my glory. I am here for the glory of the Heavenly Father. When I look up, when you look up, when I think of what Jesus Christ has done for me as a result of God's great love for us, is that what we say? I'm not here for me. I'm not here for another recognition. I'm here to be used as an instrument of Almighty God moving forward in His purpose and in His calling. Grace. Grace that comes down, that filters down to us. I was speaking to the men's Bible study yesterday and talking about the fact that one of the things that we see that is so different in the way that we relate to one another is that when we look at each other with judgment, it's always a horizontal extension of our hands. Pointing the finger, right? But when God looks down at us, it's not a finger that's pointing at us. It's the righteous right arm that's swooping under us to take us in his arms when he says, do not be afraid for I am your God. Do not be dismayed for I am the Lord. And I will uphold you with my righteous right arm. Are we, are we really willing to accept that? And to, as we look up, we recognize what God's in the process of doing. Have we reached the place where we can truly receive the full measure of God's grace applied to our lives so that we begin to learn, as Paul says in Philippians, rejoice, and again I say rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in the Lord always, knowing full well that he's called us and he sent us down to this place and he's sending us out so that we would go in his name. When we look up to him, our lives should be more enriched in that moment than it was before we allowed our eyes to lift to the heavens. Because God's grace is coming down. God's grace is coming down. Ministering to us. So we look in, we check up ourselves, we we, we ask the Lord, what is there that needs to be dealt with today? I would ask you, what is there in your life that needs to be dealt with today? And in a moment, we'll have a time of confession as we, as we prepare to come to the Lord's table. Because in that confession, you're looking up to the Lord and you're believing and trusting that he is able and he is longing to rain down his grace on you. Philip Yancey says, some of us seem so anxious about avoiding hell that we forget to celebrate our journey toward heaven. We get so caught up and worried about looking in ourselves and then looking up to take our sins and our confessions to the Lord. We're worried about what that judgment might look like. And all along, God is saying, if you will come, if you will confess, I'll cleanse you. I'll restore you. I'll give you times of refreshment. That's what the scripture says in Acts chapter 3 that when we confess our sins, he refreshes us and restores us. But the scripture also wants us to recognize, and in this passage that Paul is speaking of, not only does he say that we are to 
look inward to examine ourselves. We are also to look upward as we think about what God has done for us, but we should look at others. And he says there to us in in this passage that we, if we're hungry, eat at home, don't come to the place so that you would be tempted to push someone out so that they might miss out on the blessing of the Lord. Can I say to all of us this morning as we're together as a family, it's also meant for us to look out around us, to those around us. I I, I wonder this morning, I, I wonder today as we're gathered here and as we're together as the family of God, and I'm so grateful for it, I can't say it enough, how great this makes me feel this morning. but I can't help but wonder. As you look around this room, as you look around this room and as you look at this table that we will come to in just a few moments, as you look around this room, who in this room, as a result of something you've held against them or something you feel they're holding against you, you've not talked to in a week, a month, a year, 15 years. Can I say to you this morning, God will not honor that spirit of unforgiveness. He'll not honor it in your life as an individual and he'll not honor it corporately as a church. We need to understand that as we look around us and when there is someone across the room from us that we've not spoken to or we've kept away from because of some sin or something that we've held against them or we think they're holding against us, we need to recognize that before we can come and offer our spiritual worship and place ourselves on the altar of the Lord, we need to get right with those, those people and that individual Paul says, look around you. See the people that share this family with you. Can I, can I just say something? You know that I will. <laughs> there is absolutely nothing more arrogant than you to think that you can hold a grudge a vengeance against a brother or sister in Christ and think that you will get away with it. Paul says, listen, the reason some of you are sick, the reason some of you are dying, falling asleep, he meant dying, is because God says, your branch cannot display any fruit of the Spirit because your heart is cold and your heart is hard and you will not allow me to do anything with you and I'll take you home. I'll take you home. Nothing more arrogant than for a Christian to believe that they can harbor ill will in their heart toward another brother or sister in Christ and not pay the consequence. wrong. And that's what Paul is helping us to understand here. And you ask, the, you ask yourself the question, well, why, Brother Chuck, why is, that so, why is that so important? Here's the reason it's so important. Because not only are we to look around us at those who have gathered here with us this morning, but we're also to look around and see who's not here this morning. Maybe someone that was with us in June of 2000 when we started in that auditorium at the high school. It's not here today. Do we know why? Have we looked and have we thought about that? Have we recognized the fact that we are the people that God has called to look around us as we, first of all, look in and then look up and then we begin to see the people and we begin to see them and pray that we would have the eyes of Jesus to see the way he does and to have the heart of Jesus to forgive and to love and to care in the manner that he cares for us and to have eyes that are soft and ears that are sensitive and hands that smooth. 
the hard places. Because we're walking in the grace of the Lord. It's so important for us to remember this morning that while we live in a world that is so concerned with cultural wars and we get so caught up in that and what, what worship looks like and what the church should be and who should be and all those kind of things, we neglect the church's mission as a haven of grace in a world that is filled with ungrace. Do we recognize this morning, I said a couple of weeks ago, that we are the instruments of God to bring heaven to earth. I want us to understand this morning that as a result of that truth, we also are the purveyors of God's grace to a lost and dying world. We are to take the, take the grace of God to the world and to that co-worker and to that neighbor and to that coach on the opposing team at the little league that you just can't stand because you've never beaten them <laughs> oh I know I know they cheat all right have you prayed for them what did you hear what Jesus said So we're to love our enemies and we're to pray for those that cheat us, persecute us, right? Are we looking around us? Are we recognizing this morning that we truly are purveyors of grace, God's grace? so interesting to me that we read, we hear, we believe a good theology of grace. And we can have a proper theology of grace, but the only thing, matter, the only thing that really matters is the way we live grace before the world. And finally, this morning, as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's table, I believe Paul would ask us to look at the table, the Lord's table, and as I take a look at this table, his table. I see what he did. I'm reminded of what he did for me. And if I think very carefully, I can see that which he, which he is doing for me right now. And if I look closely, closing my eyes just for a moment, I can see what he will do for me. Here it is. I remember what he has done. He has justified me. Justification. He has made me right with God. I acknowledge what he is doing. Sanctification. He is setting me apart. Not so that I would look with haughty eyes, but with eyes of compassion and grace toward the world around me because in my sanctification, I am becoming more and more like Jesus. And then as I remember and think about all that he will do, I receive and understand the biblical teaching of glorification because one day, one day, I'll be in the presence of Almighty Jesus. And in that moment, I'll be perfect. I'll be glorified. And in that moment, Jesus will stand before the Father and he will place me at the Father's feet and he will say, Father, here is your glory. The work, the work of my hands. Right? Right? Therefore, this morning, let's take a moment, check ourselves. Let's take a moment and look up and receive the grace of God as we confess our sins that we are restored. Let's look around us and recognize this morning that maybe the sin that we're harboring, that we're holding on to, that we're not laying at the altar is a, 
ill will toward a brother or sister that's in this room this morning. Let's get that settled today. Let's get that made right today. And then as we look and recognize that there are so many others that are not here with us today that could be many that would like to be but for one reason or another, we've not invited them, we've not asked them, we've not, we've not purveyed God's grace to them. And let's look at the Lord and all that he has done and remind ourselves this morning. He's the reason we're here. We have come to celebrate and to remember him. Amen? Amen. Would you bow just for a moment? I'm going to ask the men to come and prepare the table. And together, we will receive the Lord's Supper this morning. And I want to remind you that here at Victory Baptist, we practice what's known as open communion. If you are a believer, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, you've been washed in the blood, you have accepted and confessed Jesus as Lord, we invite you to his table today. The scripture reminds us that on the night that Jesus would be betrayed and then judged and sentenced to death, on that night he met with those that were the closest to him and he took a loaf of bread, one loaf of bread, and there's so much significance in that and I've shared this with you many times, but the one loaf of bread reminds us that we are a people of one faith. We are a people of one hope. We are a people with one Savior. And today we come celebrating and rejoicing in Him. He is one with the Father. And we are made one with the Father through Jesus. Amen? Amen. But He blessed the bread. And the Bible says that He broke the bread. Why did he break it? He broke it so that he could share it and remind us that he came to share his life with us. And today we share his life together. So we bless the bread that reminds us that we are one and we are one because Jesus shared his life with us. We bless the bread. Jesus, Lord and our Savior, Lord, we know you went to the cross for us to show you great love that you have for us, Lord. And Lord, as we take this bread that represents your body, Lord, let us show the love that we have for you. Amen.
Jesus said, take and eat. <clears throat> On that same night, Jesus took a cup, a cup of joy, a cup of hope, a cup of praise, save for the last. And he blessed it. And he said, this cup represents the sacrifice that I will make, the shedding of my blood for the remission of sin. And today we give thanks for what God has done for us through his son, Jesus Christ. And today the cup reminds us that only as a result of who he is and what he's done can we celebrate and rejoice in his lordship. We give thanks for the cup. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this time of remembrance, Lord, that we can come together and, Lord, we can partake of this cup, which represents, Lord, the shared blood of your son, Jesus Christ, who willingly gave his life for each of us. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen.
said, take and drink. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I'm grateful that we've had this opportunity today. It's an opportunity that reminds us that we are God's creation. It's an opportunity that reminds us that we have opportunity to become the children of God if we will trust in the name of the Lord Jesus and call upon his name. And so as we stand together for a moment or two this morning, we extend to you the invitation to come and to call upon the name of the Lord just now. We extend the invitation to you this morning to come and to say, this is where God would have me to worship and to serve. We want to be a part of his family here. This is an opportunity for you to come and say, would one of these men, would you pray with me, Brother Chuck? You come right now as we share this moment together with this song of invitation. You come right now. Amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear? The hour I first. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. God is at work. God has restored relation this morning right here in this time. God is good. God is great, worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. And then we have opportunity to welcome into our family this morning. Tony, would you come? And Miss Billy Sue, this fine couple. They've been worshiping with us over the last uh, several weeks. Had opportunity to meet with them this week, and they are coming by statement of faith into our fellowship here, Miss Billy Sue Agee and Tony, and we are grateful for this opportunity to be able uh, to share with them and to welcome them into the family today. And Norm, I believe they're in your Sunday school class. It's amazing. <laughs> Come on up here, brother. It's a true mirror. Uh, that is some amazing grace there. That's right. <laughs> That's right, Pastor. <laughs> All right. But if you rejoice with me today and uh, celebrate with their decision that has not been taken lightly, but they have sought the Lord, and I am convinced that they know that this is where God wants them. Would you let them know with a hearty amen this morning? Amen. amen. God bless you. We're so glad to welcome you into our family here. But, so, Miss Caitlin... Way to go, girl. Awesome. I, I hope someone took a picture or two of that so you'll remember this day. 
because it's a very special day for all of us, and we're grateful that we could share that. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your special journey with the Lord. So thank you. Jim Murray, my brother, God bless you. We love you. We'll always love you. And you know what? I think he sounds just like he did when I was a teenager. (laughs) Only better. Well, remind you, 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock this afternoon in the Fellowship Hall, we'll have a reception for Jim and Miss Brenda. I'm going to ask them to stand up here just for a moment. Uh, You come by and welcome Tony and Billy Sue into our fellowship today, and we are grateful for their coming Grateful for you being here today. Do you think this was worth doing? Amen. 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 Remind you that this evening, uh, countywide Baptists getting together. Can you imagine? We're having a revival tonight, and it'll all be taking place at Emmanuel Baptist Church in Lebanon at 6 o'clock, so we do want to encourage you to be aware of that as well. Well, let's stand together. Join hands one with another, if you would. We are family after all, right? And may we go in the purpose and in the calling of Almighty God. Heavenly Father, for your blessing, we are grateful today. We have been blessed. And now, Father, may we go to be a blessing to those around us, and may we never lose sight of that which you've entrusted to us to share with others. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. We hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of Victory Live. This is your personal invitation to visit us next week for worship on the Victory Baptist campus. To find weekly worship schedules, upcoming events, or to learn about better connecting with Victory Baptist, please visit vbcmtj.org. Our prayer is that the live broadcast of this week's worship gathering has helped you to grow in your walk with Christ. And again, Thanks for joining us today for Victory Live.